Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be my everyday makeup drawer video for February. I haven't done one of these videos in a little while. I think the last time I switched it up was during the fall. And I really like doing this because for me, it's just such a good way to make sure I'm rotating through all of the makeup I own and I'm using everything throughout the year. These are basically my go-to products when I sit down to do my makeup. I do test new makeup for YouTube, for social media, because it is part of my job, but I do also have a lot of go-to staples. And again, I just like to make sure I'm using the products I already have because I love so many of these products. Products, and I don't want to forget about them just because there are new launches. I really try to strike a balance on my channel and even though it is part of my job to review new makeup, I also like to use and enjoy what I already have. In 2023, I'm doing it a little bit differently because in the past I would include a lot of makeup products that I hadn't actually tried and they were things I would be testing over the next few months. But this year I'm just focusing on products that I've already tested thoroughly. A lot of these are older products I've had in my collection. Some might be a little bit newer, but again, I've tested them fully. So so they are favorites if they're in here for the most part. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're kind of interested in like shop my stash content or you're not buying a lot of makeup, then I hope you'll enjoy these videos and just kind of use them as a reminder to pull out some products you love. Maybe you'll see an older favorite in these videos and be reminded that you really enjoy it and you already own it and then you can pull it out too. But these are basically my go-to products for the next few months. So I'll switch it back up maybe in the springtime, but for now, these are what I'll be using. Okay, so let me start with complexion products. So I only have two primers in here. My go-to primer right now is this one from e.l.f. It is the Power Grip Primer, but this one is the version that has 4% niacinamide. So I do have the original version as well. I love them both, but I think I like this one a little bit better. I just find that it makes my skin look extra glowy, extra smooth. They are pretty similar, so if you have the other one, I wouldn't say run out and buy this, but if you use it up fully and you do like the idea of having niacinamide in your primer, I think you'll enjoy it. So this really is my go-to right now, but I also wanted to include this primer as well. This one is from Catrice. It's their oil controlling primer. They used to have this under a different name. They just kind of repackaged it and improved all of their primers. It was in a white bottle. I just used up my older one last month, so now I'm using this one. I tested out the newer formulas just to see if they were the same. It feels the exact same on the skin. So I love this when I want more of a matte look, but I want a really smooth canvas too. I guess technically you could use this as a primer as well. I don't usually use this as a primer. I typically mix it into my foundation. It's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I have the shade one, or I'll use it as like a liquid highlighter. I don't typically use this as a primer, but I know some people do, and some people even use it as like their base complexion product. But I've actually been mixing it in with this foundation. This is from Catrice. It is the True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This is my number one go-to foundation. I have the shade 030 Neutral Sand. So I basically always have this in my everyday makeup drawer. I do have the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. I have the shade 3W. I'll swatch it for you, and I'll swatch it compared to this Catrice one, just in case you wear this shade. Also, if you're new to these videos, I have been trying to share as many swatches as possible, just for reference. So this is the Catrice in 030 Neutral Sand, and this one is Makeup by Mario in 3W. This one dries down to more of like a satin, almost matte finish. It looks pretty skin-like. This one definitely stays glowy. I don't know if I've done a video actually wearing this on camera. I know I didn't do like a first impressions video or anything like that. I know that it's gotten some mixed reviews, especially from people who have oily skin, but I really like the way it looks. I wore it again yesterday. It just applies so easily. It's very blendable, very quick. It gives your skin a gorgeous glow. I do set mine with powder, especially right in the T-zone, but it just looks really healthy on the skin. And I think for like some of the reviews I've seen where people don't like this, they are kind of layering it up. And I feel like if you go in with a little bit less and really blend it into the skin, that's the way it looks the best. It's not the most long lasting foundation ever. Like I would definitely say the Catrice foundation lasts better on my skin, but the Makeup by Mario one looks really pretty very glowy. I just, I enjoy it. So I'll use it in an upcoming video for sure. I do have the NYX Bear With Me Blur. I have the shade 05 Vanilla, which weirdly enough, like when you look at it in the packaging, it looks like it's going to be too dark for me. But I feel like when I actually apply this to my face, and once it dries, it's almost a little bit too light. So I did end up ordering the shade 06. I wasn't sure if 06 was going to be too dark, but I figured I could always mix them together. I really like this product. Like as you rub it into the skin, I feel like you can tell that it gives your skin like this really pretty soft blurred finish. It looks really nice. It does dry down to like a complete matte finish. 
So if you're looking for something hydrating or satin or skin-like, this really is not the option for you. But if you have oily skin or you like more of a matte base product that does give your skin a little bit of a blur, then this is a great option. It feels like a CC cream, but again, it has a matte finish. And I feel like a lot of CC creams don't have that matte finish. If you have dry skin, I just don't think that's going to be the product for you though. So for concealer, I have a few. I always keep this one in here. It's the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I have the shade Light 119. I use this mainly as a spot concealer. So if I have a breakout and it leaves a scar, I'll use this product before I go in with foundation. So it just kind of stays in here all the time. This has been my go-to for a long time at this point. I used it all summer, all fall. I think I might've started using it back in the spring. It's the Catrice True Skin Concealer. I definitely find this formula to be very hydrating. It's a little bit thinner. It blends out easily. Again, let me swatch these next to each other. This one is the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Finish. This really is more of a soft matte finish. It's very lightweight. It feels good on the skin. And I do like this one when I want more of a matte finish or I want it to last a little bit longer than Catrice. And then I have this one from Say. I did recently get a new shade, but I think I tried this like last spring for the first time. I always think it's interesting when I swatch some of my go-to products next to each other because they all kind of work for my skin tone, but they're all so different. So this one is Catrice in Cool Cashmere. And then this one is Makeup Revolution in C6. And then this one is Say in the shade two. So you can definitely see the difference in the finishes. The Say one is super glowy. If you like a very, very glowy concealer, then I think you'll enjoy this one. The Catrice one did dry down. I don't know, these almost look like they have the same finish, but under the eyes, this doesn't look quite as dry. Maybe because I have foundation underneath, I prep my eyes with eye cream, but I would say under the eyes, like it looks and feels a lot more hydrating than it looks right here. And then this is the Makeup Revolution one. I would say that's pretty accurate. So here's a look at my favorite concealers right now. I have a couple of loose powders. I have the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. This one has been my favorite for like the last five months, maybe even longer at this point. I have the shade Oat, which is translucent. I love this one. I think it does a good job setting your makeup, but it doesn't leave you overly mattified. So I do enjoy this. I recently repurchased the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. They did update the packaging, so now it comes in this pink packaging, but I love this powder. I think it's such a gorgeous option. I would say it's not quite as mattifying as the Beauty Bakery Powder. It's not glowy, and the name Halo Glow kind of implies that you're going to have like a glowy finish, especially now that they have the Halo Glow Liquid Filter, but this gives your skin such a soft focus finish. I feel like this gives the effect of an hourglass powder on the skin, but it comes in a loose version. I've tried the hourglass loose powder before, and I actually prefer this e.l.f. one to hourglass. Also, this does come in different shades, and I'm pretty sure the hourglass powder just comes in one, like a translucent shade, but I like that this has just a little bit of color. I have the shade light. I do feel like it brightens up my under eyes. I do have the Milani Conceal and Perfect Blur Out Powder. This, I do like this. I think the actual formula is so good. It gives my skin a very smooth finish, but it's a little bit dark for my skin, especially compared to the powders I normally go for, like the Beauty Bakery one, the e.l.f. one. So when I use it, it does darken my under eyes or the rest of my face a little bit. So I feel like it will probably be more ideal during the summertime, but I still find myself reaching for it. I'll usually just use like a very large fluffy brush and a small amount because it gives my skin a super smooth look. This is the Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. So if I'm in the mood to wear a powder foundation, I'll use this. Sometimes I'll use it to set my foundation if I'm using something a little bit lighter and softer, or if I want extra coverage, this is really nice. And then I just have the LIS Beauty Translucent Powder, which I always have this in my drawer too. It's one of my favorites. Next, I wanna talk about cheek products. So it's really interesting looking at my drawer this year because I'm sure like last January or last February when I filmed this, this looked completely different. Like I have all cream cheek products in here except for one powder. And I'm sure last year it was like the opposite, like mostly powders and maybe a few creams. But I've definitely come to appreciate cream cheek products. And if you're kind of intimidated by creams or you have oily skin and you don't know if they'd work for you, I do have a few formulas I think you'll enjoy. So I have cre or I have bronzers, blushes, and highlighters in here. I'll just kind of go through them all at the same time. I do have these Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light wands. I have Pinkasm and then I also have Spotlight. I got this as a set during the holiday season because I'd never tried this formula and I'm glad I got the chance to try them out. The highlighter to me is good, but honestly, the Flower Beauty ones I think are better and they're less expensive, but I do really like Pinkasm. So here's Pinkasm, here's Spotlight, 
They're really, really gorgeous on the skin. They give your skin a nice glow. But again, I feel like the Flower Beauty ones are basically the same thing as this. Let me actually swatch the Flower Beauty ones for you. Here's Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight. Here's Flower Beauty Opal. And then here's Flower Beauty Gleam, just for reference. I mean, I guess the Charlotte Tilbury one is maybe a little bit more subtle, but I didn't even blend these in. Like if you're to actually blend them in, they basically look the same on the skin. So if you can find a shade that's pretty similar, I mean, Opal and Spotlight are very, very close. I would say just go with Flower Beauty if you wanna save money. 2023 is the year where we're going to see even more brands come out with products like this. But Flower Beauty launched these a few months ago. I originally purchased this shade, which is Opal, and then recently I got Gleam. Like I said, I use these more than the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. Pinkgasm is such a gorgeous color. If Flower Beauty had more shades, I would just stick with them, but Charlotte Tilbury at this point does have more options. The only other liquid cheek products that I have in my drawer right now are these two blushes from Rare Beauty. So I have Hope, and then I also have the shade Encourage. These are so beautiful. I have been on like a Rare Beauty blush kick for the last few months. Again, I got a little set during the holiday season, so I was wearing them quite a bit, and I just, I'm so shocked every time I use these because I just don't think in my mind that a liquid blush is going to blend out and look as good on the skin as it does. And I guess not all of them do, but Rare Beauty just does it so well. So let me just blend them out so you can see. I mean, when I use this shade, I guess I really do use like maybe one dot. Usually with the pink one, I'll add on a little bit more but they just blend out so easily. I have this blush from Merit. It is their Flush Balm Cheek Color in the shade Cheeky. I think Merit actually just came out with new shades as well. It's such a pretty blush. I feel like this is the perfect winter blush because it just gives you like that, I've been outside in the cold all day type of look. It's so pretty. You could use this on the lips too. I just find that it's very easy to apply. It's super small, so you could throw it in your bag if you want. Then I also have this cream blush from Persona in the shade Jam. I love this one so much. I think I talked about it in a recent video. I did a video on like some of my new favorite winter products and that's been out for a little while, but they recently came out with a new shade. So let me swatch this for you. This one is Merit Cheeky and then this one is Persona Jam. You could build this one up to look even more intense as well. They do have a very, very similar finish and they're just so pretty on the skin. I love them so much. Like looking at them, I just wanna wear them. They're so gorgeous. For bronzers, I have a few different options. This one is from Makeup Revolution. It's the Ultra Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. Mine looks very well loved at this point. It's been my go-to for the past few months. It's very, very creamy. It gives your skin like a true dewy finish. It is pretty intense, so you can build it up or sheer it out, and I just find that it's very easy to work with. If you're kind of intimidated by cream bronzers, I think you'll like this one. To me, this does feel like a high-end formula. I haven't tried a ton of high-end cream bronzers that come in similar packaging. Like a lot of my favorites are stick bronzers, but this one is just so creamy, so gorgeous on the skin. So that one's a great option. Actually, all of the bronzers in my drawer right now are all drugstore or affordable bronzers that I love. These are the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzers. Again, a little bit of a newer launch, but I felt like I knew I was going to enjoy the formula before even trying it because I do like the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blushes. Summer Fridays is like a little bit warmer. Vacay Mood's a little bit cooler. I actually prefer Vacay Mood, which really surprised me because I don't usually go for like a very cool toned bronzer. And you could use it as more of a contour if you want. I just apply it where I would apply bronzer. And I feel like it just kind of works really well with my skin tone. So again, Makeup Revolution in the shade Light. This one is Summer Fridays from e.l.f. And then this one is Vacay Mood. See how it has like a really pretty luminous glow to it? It's not quite the same as like a true cream product that looks very dewy on the skin. This one has like the actual feel and texture of the putty blushes or putty bronzers which are more of like a cream to powder, but it still gives your skin a pretty glow. So like I was saying earlier, if you have oily skin or you're kind of intimidated by creams, you don't think they'll last on the skin, this might be a great option. They have a bunch of different shades. These are the two lightest shades. Another good option if you are intimidated by creams or you kind of just wanna get into them would be the ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks. They have bronzers, blushes, highlighters. I actually used this one for like all of December and I hit pan on it because I was using it so much. It looks so pretty on the skin, really, really natural. It definitely has more of a matte finish than the e.l.f. bronzers, so that's why I've been reaching for those but this one's in the shade Get Sandy. It's so pretty. And again, ColourPop does have a bunch of different shades. I've been really enjoying their highlighters too. This one is Lunch Money, 
which is very natural on my skin tone. So if I don't want anything too intense, I'll reach for lunch money. But really my favorite has been this one. This one is Wisp. This is the most gorgeous highlighter. It looks so pretty on the skin. Like sometimes a liquid highlighter like Flower Beauty or Charlotte Tilbury can be a little bit too much for me. And when that's the case, I'll reach for this one because it looks glowy on the skin. Like there's no denying that it looks you know, it gives you a highlight. But because the formula is more of like that cream to powder, almost a little bit like a putty, it just looks really natural. And I feel like it doesn't highlight texture in the same way a lot of other highlighters can. So again, this one is Wisp and this one is Lunch Money. They're both so pretty on the skin. And then this is the bronzer in Get Sandy. So as you can see, the bronzer doesn't have the glow of like the Elf Luminous Putty Bronzer or the Makeup Revolution product but it does apply like a cream and then it just has more of like that powder finish. Back here I have this blush from Tarte. I got this in a BoxyCharm box. It is the Breezy Cream Blush in the shade Peach Sunset. I love this formula so much. I think it is so pretty. And again, I know I keep saying this, but I feel like this is a more ideal option for you if you do tend to prefer powders or you're newer to creams because this is not as creamy as like the, the Merit blush or the Persona one. It definitely has like a little, not a dry texture. I feel like that's not a good way to describe creams. But when I think of creams, like I think of the fact that some of them have a very creamy, like luminous, almost wet sheen. And then some have a little bit more of like, I guess a natural satin finish. And that's what this Tarte blush has. I got this little set of LYS Beauty blushes during the holidays. I'll just swatch one of them for you because I don't think this is still available. But if you like very pigmented blush, I think you'll like LYS. The formula is kind of similar to that Tarte formula where it's not like overly dewy or glowy on the skin, but it does have more of a creamy texture. So I would say they almost have more of a matte finish rather than like a true glowy finish but I feel like some days I just prefer that. But like I said, I did get this set during the holidays. So this one is in the shade Empower. And if it is still available on the LYS website, I'll link it below. This one is in the shade Unforgettable. I feel like it's just such a nice way to try out the formula and have a few different options without committing to full-size blushes. And then this one is in the shade Grateful. I like when brands do create mini options. I know Rare Beauty did that during the holidays. Charlotte Tilbury, LYS. Okay, and then I just have this powder blush. This is the only powder cheek product. It's from RMS Beauty in the shade Maiden's Blush. This is so gorgeous. Like this makes me wanna pull out all of my glowy powder blushes again. I'm kind of waiting to do that. I feel like I will do that during the spring, maybe the summer. Right now I'm definitely on a cream kick, but this gives your skin such a gorgeous glow and I don't wanna apply a ton of products. I'll usually skip bronzer and highlighter and just use this because it has like a little bit more of like a bronzy undertone. I feel like it's perfect on the days when I just want like one product. For eyeshadow, I'm keeping it so simple this time around. These are the only palettes I have in my drawer and then everything else is a single shadow. I can still pull out any eyeshadow palette I have if I wanna do like a colorful look or use something specifically, but these really are going to be the ones I reach for the majority of the time because I do wanna focus on some ColourPop Super Shock shadows. This is the e.l.f. eyeshadow palette in I Love You A Latte. Mine is very well loved. It just comes with four matte shadows. So this is perfect if I do really wanna focus the look on a Super Shock shadow because I'll just use one of these in the crease. If I wanna darken it up, I'll use this shade. If I want something slightly more warm toned, I'll use this shade. I love this little quad so much. I do have two of the CoverGirl eyeshadow palettes. So I purchased these because I wanted to test them out to see what the formula was like. Actually, I purchased this one originally, Dreamy Pink, and it really shocked me. I love this so much. I do have a video using this on my channel, as well as like a full review on both of them. So I'll link those videos below. But these are really great. I can use them on their own to create a full look or I can just use like one shadow and then again reach for a ColourPop Super Shock shadow. This one is in Shimmering Beige, which again, it's very basic, very simple, but I find myself using these a lot. I've just kind of been going for something a little more low key lately. This is the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. I've had this for what feels like forever, like ever since they launched the brand. I was so tempted to pick up the new Makeup by Mario palette, but I just know that I don't need it. It's so pretty. It got great reviews. I'm sure I would love it and maybe I will try it again later, but I'm really trying not to buy 
a lot of palettes this year. Other than the occasional new drugstore launch to actually like try and review the formula, I'm not really planning on buying very many palettes. So I'm just trying to enjoy what I have. I'll be rotating through them this year, but I feel like this is perfect for my drawer just so I can use like whatever staple neutral shadow I want in the crease and then use a lid shade. So like I said, I do have a bunch of ColourPop Super Shock shadows. Let me just pull this section out. I love the ColourPop Super Shock shadows so much. I actually do want to focus on using some of the more colorful shades as well, but I just threw like a bunch of neutral go-to staple shades in here so I could just pull them out easily. I don't know if they're all still available or not. I kind of want to do a video like swatching my entire Super Shock shadow collection. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that or not because I know they're not like a new launch, but I just love them. I think they're so pretty and then maybe I can kind of like break it up and share the ones that are available, the ones that were discontinued, but still kind of swatch them for comparison. Let me know if you'd be into that. But I will go through and show you these and swatch them for you as well. So this one is the shade Solitaire. This one is Mycelium. This one was from the Raw Beauty Christie collab. This one is in the shade Mighty Morphin. By the way, I always put timestamps for these videos in the description box in case you're not into like a certain part of the video. So if you don't like the Super Shock shadows, you can skip ahead to the other eye products. This one is in the shade Kush. This one is Solitaire. It has like a little bit of a pink base. I don't know if you can tell on camera. This one is Mycelium. This one is Mighty Morphin. It's a little bit softer. And then this one is Kush, one of my favorites. I love this one so much. This one is Lightning Bug. I feel like you can tell because some of my favorites are like very well used. This one is Frog. I actually repurchased this one because I did hit pan on mine and then the rest of it shattered. I love this one too. It looks so pretty over pink looks. Secret Garden is gorgeous if you love like a rusty copper shade. And then this is a little bit of an older one, Birthday Cake. It's a really pretty like almost pinky rose gold. This one is Lightning Bug. This one is Frog. This one is Secret Garden. And then this one is Birthday Cake. So here's what they look like swatched. I feel like Lightning Bug and Secret Garden are kind of similar. But again, I don't know which ones are available and which ones aren't off the top of my head So I just wanted to swatch them all for reference. I have four more. This one is a little quirky I love this one. It's such a gorgeous color. Actually, this one is frog as well I didn't realize because this one has like limited edition pink packaging, but they are the same I've been using this one non-stop. This one's in the shade La Mesa It is such a gorgeous just like everyday staple gold and then this one is birthday girl I feel like maybe this one is kind of dried out you know what, I know people say the ColourPop Super Shock shadows dry out really quickly. I don't really have that experience. I feel like I do try to close them very tightly and inevitably they are going to dry out because they are more of like a cream to powder. But I feel like for how many I have, I don't experience that one too much. Although Birthday Girl is very, very dried out. So I'm not going to swatch this one. So here's the other two, a little quirky and then La Mesa. This is the Urban Decay Moondust Eyeshadow in the shade Space Cowboy. So a lot of you guys told me that the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Rich is a dupe. I thought I had Ritz, but I can't find it now. But it's basically just like a glittery shade. It's super, super pretty. This is the KVD Dazzle Stick in the shade Hail Surge, which I do feel like kind of gives a very similar effect to the ColourPop Super Shock shadows, but it's just in a little bit of a different form. But again, it just gives you like that wet, sparkly look. And this is just what I'm really into right now. I feel like a nice easy brown in the crease and then something that gives you like that wet shiny finish is so pretty. And then, you know what, I'm going to take these out of my drawer. I have had these in here for a little while, the Flower Beauty Chrome Crush Pressed Pigments. I've been using these so much. I've talked about them a lot on my channel, but I feel like I really want to focus on the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows this season. So I'm going to take those out for a little while. So let me share my eye and brow products and then I'll finish up with lip products. I do have a few mascaras open right now. I've tried, I'm just not like a one mascara kind of person. <laughs> I like to have options depending on what I'm going for. Sometimes I like to layer them together. This one is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll. So I was testing out a couple of newer drugstore launches. This one is more ideal for you if you like like separated, lifted, curled lashes. It's not overly dramatic, but I like this one because it doesn't look clumpy on the eyes. This one is the Milani highly rated lash extensions mascara. I've talked about this in some different videos. It's not my personal favorite. I feel like it's very wet, kind of messy. It clumps my lashes together, but I do like it on the bottom lashes. So I've been using this one on my bottom lashes. It is a true tubing mascara, so it actually does come off with just a little bit of water. And I do find that when I wear this, it doesn't smudge or flake at all. So I wish I could get it to work for my top lashes but it just doesn't look good on me. But the bottom lashes, it's really, really nice. The Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara, 
was my favorite mascara of 2022. It just does such a great job at lifting, adding volume, length. I feel like it can be built up to look really dramatic on the eyes. And I think it is $10. So it's a great option from the drugstore. I got the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes in my BoxyCharm and I had written this mascara off for years and years. Like I actually thought I hated this mascara, but after trying it again, I really love it. I feel like it gives a very similar effect to Milani, but it's not quite as wet. And I feel like Milani, it can get overly dramatic very quickly. Whereas this one, I feel like I have a little bit more control. So I've been enjoying it a lot. I do like some high-end mascaras. But when I look at like the most or the majority of the ones I've tried over the years and repurchased, they usually are drugstore. As for the other products, I have the NYX Thick It Stick It, which is my favorite brow gel. It adds a lot of volume. It makes them look thick and full. Just so, so good. I also like the Oma Beauty One and Done. This is a two in one. So you get a brow pencil on one side and then also a brow gel on the other side. I've been using this one a lot over the last few months as well. It's definitely more of a wet formula than NYX. I feel like NYX feels a little bit more dry, especially once it dries out, obviously, but I feel like this one's slightly more dramatic. So if I want a softer brow, I usually go for NYX. I still have the Urban Decay Brow Blade. I haven't repurchased this in a while, but I had a bunch of them in my collection, so I just keep this one on hand. It's a brow pencil and brow pen all in one. But my favorite brow pen is from NYX. It is the Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. I do use the shade Espresso, but I recently got the shade Brunette, which is a little bit lighter and softer. And I feel like that one is great if I want more of a natural brow. I have three liquid liners. I have Urban Decay's Perversion, which has been my favorite for years. I don't even know how long. Like I wanna say five or six years at this point. So I always end up repurchasing that one and it does have a brush tip. I feel like a lot of other liquid liners have felt tips, including ColourPop. This is their BFF liquid liner. So I have this one and then, oh no, this isn't a liner. This is the Lottie London Brow Pen. This one's in the shade Brown. So again, it's a little bit softer than NYX Espresso. I feel like Espresso, let me just swatch them next to each other. Espresso is kind of dark and I do have dark hair, darker brows, but sometimes I feel like you can just go overboard very quickly. I always have a heavy hand with my brows. So sometimes when I use like lighter, softer shades, it, it ends up looking better. So here's the Lottie London one in brown, and then here's NYX in Espresso. And then this is from Tarte. I got this in my BoxyCharm a few months ago as well, and I've just been enjoying it. It's the Double Take Awake Dual Ended. Like one side is an eyeliner, and then the other side is a light nude eye pencil. Let me finish up with lip products. So normally with my everyday makeup drawer, I have a ton of lip products. Like lipstick, lip gloss, lip oil. I really want to narrow it down every season and just focus on a few formulas so I can make sure I'm really getting a lot of use out of them. So I narrowed it down to these. Again, that's not to say I can't just like pull out a different lipstick or lip liner or whatever I want to use, but I just want to make sure I'm focusing on these because either I really love them and I'm really enjoying them or I haven't used them in a while in this case and I wanna see if I still like the formulas. This is the e.l.f. Sheer Slick Lipstick in the shade Black Cherry. So they've discontinued all of these except the shade Black Cherry, which is because I feel like a lot of people are saying it's a dupe for Clinique's Black Honey. Sucks they discontinued them because the formula is so good. I feel like I recommended them in so many videos last year. It's just like a very pretty glossy sheer lip balm. It's so pretty. I don't know, maybe they're redoing the line and they're going to come out with additional shades. I don't know if this is a dupe for Black Honey. I tried Black Honey once, like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. Probably not that long ago. I feel like that's not something I would have gone for back then. But I did try it once years and years ago, and I don't remember it being, like, a standout product for me personally, but I know it's made a little bit of a resurgence. This one is the e.l.f. Electric Mood Pity Zion collab. I don't think it's still available. It was limited edition. It's basically the same formula, just in more of like a cherry shade. So I wanted to put those in my drawer so I could use them. I feel like they're really good formulas for the winter. These are the Kaja Heart Melter Gloss Sticks. Moisture gloss sticks, hydrating gloss sticks, something like that. These are really pretty. I think when I originally bought them, I thought they were going to be more similar to like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, but these are basically just like cream lipsticks. They're really cute. They have like this heart-shaped applicator, which I actually think does kind of help as you're applying it to the lips. 
doesn't want to focus, but I think you can still see. This one is in the shade Let's Chill, and then this one is in the shade So Fine. I mean, they definitely have like a glossy sheen to them, but I wouldn't call them like a glossy lipstick. I feel like a glossy lipstick is very specific. These feel more like a cream lipstick, so I like that better because they stay in place well, but they do have that glossy finish. Two Tower 28 glosses right now. I have Sesame and Cashew. Honestly, I feel like they're all just around my house in the most random spots because this is the type of formula I bring with me when I'm like running out the house. It's super easy, really shiny. Here's Cashew, here's Sesame. I've really been on like a big Sesame kick. I feel like that one is really fun for winter time. Actually, this formula is kind of similar. This is from the brand Into You. These are the Syrup Glossy Lip Tints. These are so pretty. I've actually been wearing these a lot since, I want to say like, September because I pulled them back out for fall. So this one's in the shade Geo 3. Actually, let me swatch them all and then I'll show you the names. So this shade is three, this shade is four, and then this shade is five. So as you can see, they definitely have a very similar texture and look to the Tower 28 glosses. I would say these are maybe slightly thicker. Not in a bad way, they have like that plush feel to them. So I do find that they last on the lips a little bit longer. And then once like that glossy layer wears off, you're not left with a stain. But I feel like the color, a little bit of color is almost left behind. These are from Catrice. They're the Powerful 5 Glossy Lip Oils. They look a little bit more intense in the packaging, but they're pretty sheer as you apply them. I mean, this one basically looks pink, or not pink, it basically looks clear on the lips. What color is this? That one's Cherry Blossom Glow, and then this one is Raspberry Glow. This one definitely has more of a tint to it, but I like this formula because I do feel like it... Like after it wears off, my lips feel really smooth. Sometimes with other lip oils, like after they wear off, your lips just feel the same or sometimes they feel dried out if it's a bad formula. But the Catrice formula does feel really nourishing. And then this is just Rare Beauty's Gloss Balm in Nearly Berry. That's what they look like next to each other. So I love these. I feel like they're just kind of, again, nice everyday options. I don't have any actual lipsticks in my drawer because when I wanna wear like a lipstick, whether it's a matte lipstick or a cream lipstick, other than these ones from Kaja, I just kind of open up my drawer and pull them out. But these are like formulas I'll use all the time. Like sometimes I'll throw them on top of lipstick, on top of lip liner. I'll grab them when I'm running out the door. They don't necessarily take like a lot of thought as you're applying them. So that's why I put them in my everyday makeup drawer. Oh, and then I just have these CoverGirl glosses. I've talked about these so much on my channel. The new CoverGirl gloss formula is really pretty. It's very lightweight really thin but super glossy. So that's everything I wanted to share with you in today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have tested these products out or like worn them in some recent videos, a lot of these products. So I'll link some videos in the description where you can see them in action if that's something you'd be into. But otherwise, I really appreciate you spending time with me here on my channel today. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.